Mondays with Mark Allen. Welcome back. I am with Jackson Laundry, who just crushed the entire world at Ironman 70.3 Oceanside. Definitely a breakthrough race for you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. Um, certainly a performance I knew I was capable of, and and I've you know had that those thoughts that that I'm right where I need to be for the last several races and you know, each one has kind of gotten me closer and closer, but this one seems to be a, certainly a jump up and, uh, yeah, who knows what's possible. So, uh, can't wait to get back out and, and, and try it again against some of the same guys who probably want another crack at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They love, they love to race against a champion, especially when, uh, when the person makes that breakthrough and they like, you probably beat a lot of guys, uh, that maybe you haven't had the opportunity to either race or beat in the past. Yeah. Um, Probably the, you know, I've only raced Alistair a few times. That was probably the third time. The first one, he beat me by probably 15 minutes hmm. in uh, St. George in 2017. And then, and that was a good race for me at that time. Um, and then we raced in Daytona, but he didn't have a chance to finish. He was injured in 2020. And then this time, um, so it was the first time I was able to beat him. And the first time I was able to beat Lionel, uh, we've raced many, many times. Um, Collins Cup, we didn't have the same matchup, so I don't really count that. Our times were pretty close, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely a pretty good feeling to beat him on a day when he seemed to have a, you know, he obviously had a fantastic run and uh, probably a pretty standard swim and bike for him. So, yeah, it just came together, that's for sure. Yeah, you ran you ran a one ten and change, and and Lionel ran I think one oh eight high, something like that. So I, I was actually surprised at his run because your your run was amazing, and then he kind of one upped it on the run. Of of course he didn't win; he was second place. So yeah, yeah. I mean that's uh, it was my best run ever. I it was a thirty six second PB for me at the mm. distance, um, and yeah, really encouraging because I definitely think I have a little bit more or could have had a little bit more in the tank had I really needed it the last mile or so. Um, mm. so, you know, obviously I wasn't going to be running 108.30, but I, I definitely could have kind of snuck under 110. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to enjoy the finish when you have a day like that. And, and it was really, really cool to see Lionel come through and he still had quite a deficit, um, at the last turnaround, which was only about 4k to the end. So, mm pretty amazing that he was able to catch Alistair and Rudy. Hmm. Well, if all, all of your competitors, if you're watching this, you just heard it right here. He had more in the tank that he didn't have to put out because you guys were slouching out there. Alistair, all you guys you know, <laughs> gave it to him a little easier, too easy. Uh, uh, definitely not I, too I, easy. I, I, I want to go back to Collins cup last year, because that was the first time that I was actually at a race that you were racing. You were in the, the final matchup, the, the 12th of 12 matchups and um you know watching you come through that last long stretch where you can see people coming toward the finish line you were just flying i don't know if anybody finished as fast as you did on the run and that was when the light bulb went on in my head saying like this guy is going to be one of the best ever seeing the way you ran out there wow yeah thanks so much i uh i've definitely really improved my run the most out of all three sports over the last few years. Um, I think, you know, a lot of experience comes into play in terms of just running. If I were to just go to an open running race, I don't, I actually haven't gotten that much faster, but being able to run very well off the bike in mm. a, in a half is what I've really been able to hone in. And I still think there's room to improve there and, and I'll have to, because, you know, there's lots of guys running 108s, 109s now. And so that's going to be, what I'll have to do as well. And, uh, obviously it depends on the dynamics in the course, but, um, the conditions are pretty fast for Oceanside and I'm pretty happy with a 110 low. So, um, I'll enjoy it for now, but certainly not complacent because, you know, everyone's pushing and just getting faster and faster all the time. Well, that's kind of the sign of a, a good athlete. One who's not trying to figure out how, how can I repeat what I did last week, but how am I going to do one better next week? Uh, that's yeah. that's what it so. takes <laughs> yeah yeah well and then you went to st george and ended up top five there which is pretty pretty impressive great field obviously at gustav eden leading the way you were fifth and my guess is you're probably going to want to try to improve a little bit on that 
this coming October. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was another race that was probably a breakthrough in terms of just my swim and bike getting me into that lead group where I need to be to be in contention. Um, mm -hmm. And that was very, very difficult to do in that race. And, and uh, I was happy to do it, obviously. Um, I do definitely know I have room to improve on my run on that course. Um, it was pretty good, but I certainly have another couple of minutes that I can, that I can improve on. Um, so yeah, I, for sure, I'm, I'm going for a podium this year. I mean, it's a great course for me. I'm experienced on the course and I'm just, you know, improving every race. So that's kind of the big goal. The probably if there's one race, that's a little bit more of an A race, it'd be that, but there's quite a few big races this year and I'm kind of going to be racing, you know, once a month, which for me works out to a point where I can recover and train and, and kind of get ready for each event. So i um, really excited to, to kind of see what, what happens. Pretty good. If uh, St. George is on the docket and that's one of the A races, uh, I'm glad I'm not racing you. You know, it, <laughs> back at Collins Cup, there were, you know, it's a, for those of you who don't know, the run is 18K and, and Jackson was only one of four guys who broke an hour on that course. And that's, that's a very, very fast time. Obviously Oceanside, you were with, you were with Alistair and he was pushing the pace, sort of lead us through that a little bit, what that was like running with him and having him kind of looking comfortable actually for a lot of it. Yeah. Um, it was definitely the whole race was kind of a really a, a challenge for me to, to stay kind of focused. And in the moment when you're having such a good day, you need to kind of not think about what is going to happen, but you still got to keep thinking about what is happening and, and what to do at the moment. So for sure it was, uh, the first probably about seven or eight kilometers or close to five miles. It was basically me, Alistair and Rudy running together. Um, and at the time it felt it was definitely the right kind of move for me to be running with those guys. Uh, I was feeling comfortable. It was, I knew the pace was hot and probably that I wouldn't hold that exact pace. I think if you went and looked, that was probably the fastest seven K of my run. Um, but it still was so important to stay there. And, and I knew it wasn't a pace that was totally going to blow me up. So I kind of thought, all right, let's go with these guys to see, see what happens. Um, and, you know, obviously with Alistair there, you're just kind of waiting for him to make a move because you know how aggressive he is when he races. And, and when he did, you know, probably a pretty smart move on his point. I was, I was kind of right at my limit of where I wanted to go and he just mm -hmm. upped it. And I, I knew it wasn't the right move for me to go with him at that time. Um, so that was, you know, a little bit kind of, okay, here he goes. Like this is Alistair Brownlee. It's not surprising. Um, but I kind of held my pace and really stayed patient. And I, I noticed after a few K that he wasn't getting any further away. So I thought, okay, you know, he might be struggling here. Just, just keep on it and, and see what happens. And then I sort of kept that gap. And then at around 5k to go, I, I had another gear that I was able to find and just kind of upped it another, probably five seconds a K or so. And Rudy wasn't able to hold on to that pace. And then once I dropped Rudy, I, I really was quite a bit closer to Alistair and I knew that I could get him. And, um, it was just a matter of, you know, keeping to the pace and keeping, you know, relax, not getting too excited and not going by too hard or blowing up. And, um, yeah, I mean, I figured when I caught him the second, you know, two or three K from the finish that he probably was, was struggling, um, because he doesn't really give up a lead or he doesn't let other people make the move. Typically it's, you know, he's the one who wants to control the race. So I figured at that point he was a little bit, uh, in the hurt box and I had an opportunity to just, uh, kind of go by him and, that's how it ended up playing out. Yeah. And I think once you passed him that next mile, you made over 30 seconds on him. So that's, that's a big gap. Yeah. I think he was probably hanging on for dear life and, and kind of bluffing towards the end there. Cause that's a lot. And, you know, obviously he's a guy who likes to win no matter what. And he probably mm -hmm. got discouraged as well, but um, he was probably trying to just hang on at, with the lead and hope that we would give up. And um, once he got passed, yeah, he obviously didn't have much left and ended up losing another quite a bit because he uh, like he didn't even end up on the podium. So he mm. was really, really struggling. And uh, I mean, he hasn't done a long distance race in quite a long time. So 
he's probably got some rust that he scraped off and I wouldn't be surprised if his next one, he's just, you know, right back to, to being flawless. Hmm. Well, yours was pretty flawless. Clash Miami three weeks earlier. Wasn't the same kind of event that you had in Oceanside. What was the difference between those two races? Yeah. Um, uh, quite a few things. I mean, the main one for me, I'm just typically not right on it on my first race uh, hmm. of the year. So it was pretty good for me, honestly, for a first race, just getting into it. I, I The swim didn't play out in my favor. It was just so crowded, and I just got around the first buoy and was too far back. And um, so I was relegated to kind of the third group, I guess. Hmm. So that wasn't ideal. And then the bike was fine. It was just – it's a really flat course. It's I tend to excel more with a hilly course. Um, hmm. I did ride pretty well, though. And then it was just really hot on the run and and – coming from a Canadian winter, you can only do so much preparation for that. So <laughs> I, I did struggle on the run. I still moved up quite a bit, but you know, I ran, I think I was about three minutes slower than the fastest run on that day mm-hmm. on a, what was it? A 16 K run or 17 K. So obviously mm-hmm. not as good as what I was able to do in Oceanside, but I, I could tell that I felt really slow on the run, but I still ran not bad. So I knew that I had a lot more in the tank. So just coming into the Oceanside prep with a couple more weeks to train and, and really prepare specifically for that course. And then also kind of with a bit of a bigger taper, I knew it was a better opportunity for me. So mm. we really prioritized the race and it, and it played certainly into my favor. Um, and then also Oceanside being a wetsuit swim that, that helped me out to just kind of close that gap to the leaders. Um, so quite a few things playing in my favor in that regard. Um, but yeah, and I also had a thumb surgery in January uh, after a bike crash. I broke a rib and a thumb, so mm-hmm. had to have that repaired, and that kind of set me back. So I was, I'm still kind of on my way up to peak fitness, and uh, that three weeks was just what I needed. Hmm. Wow, pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, so often, you know, a result might look like it did on paper, like oh, you know, Jackson's not really in that good of shape. However. Like you said, there were a lot of elements that, that were good and you knew, you knew where that was going to catapult you in a few weeks and, and then you, you win an amazing race. There, before we go, there's one question I wanted to ask you. Um, you mentioned that you had a, a few points along your career where you, you're like, oh, I'm making a jump here. When did it happen It just that it got in your mind like, I can be one of the best? I can beat all these boys. It has to be the right day. I have to take my time, be patient, keep developing, but I can do that. Oh, good question. I think, I think probably the first time I really started believing it was in St. George for the, um, for the North American championship last year in May. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, just really, I was right. It was similar to worlds. I was kind of right at the front of the race and just sort of, had a pretty good run, but not what I knew I was capable of. And I was, I was only a couple minutes behind the win. And that was the race where Lionel and Sam were in a really good battle for the win. Mm -hmm. I think it was a little under three minutes or something. And having that result and knowing that I didn't have a perfect day, um, and that I'm just going to keep getting better. So I knew at, at that point I'm on the right path and just keep going and I will get there. Um, I honestly didn't, you never know for sure, but I just believe just keep on it and don't, don't set a timeline. Like maybe it'll be three years before I'm right where I want to be, or maybe it'll be the next race. Mm. Things happen at a pace that I, sometimes you never understand. And you just have to kind of keep, keep with the path that you're on and if it's working and just trust it. And it's really paid off. And I, I still think I've got to keep improving. And, you know, that was a fantastic result. No question, but everybody is not in peak shape in May. So Mm. I, I had the best fitness on that day but everyone's going to keep getting better and and I'll have to do the same if I want to, you know, replicate that performance or do better than, than that performance in in a few races this year. Wow. A humble athlete, a great athlete, Jackson laundry. Thanks so much for stopping by Mondays with Mark Allen. We all can't wait to see those, those races you're having this year and to see how you do, especially as you get toward the a races at the end of the season. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. It's been awesome. And uh, I'd love to come on again sometime, hopefully after a few more good races. Yeah, you got it. All right, everybody. Mondays with Mark Allen. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.